Welcome to my tutorial series on built-in functions in Python. Today I will cover next 8 built-in functions. Let's start with function callable. Callable function takes an object as argument and checks whether the object is callable or not. So what is a callable object in Python? In Python functions and classes are callable objects. Because calling a function returns some value and calling a class returns an instance of that class. In my first example, I am checking whether my function sum is callable object or not. Because a function is a callable object in Python, the callable function returns boolean true. In my next example, I am checking whether integer object 10 is a callable object or not. Because an instance of class is not a callable object in Python, callable function returns boolean false. Whereas the integer class is callable object. In my next example, I am checking whether my class A and its instance are callable objects or not. Now let's move to next two functions, ought and care, which are very simple. In Python 3, ought function takes a character as argument and returns its Unicode value. Whereas in Python 2, ought function returns the byte value. The care function is inverse of ought function. Now let's move to static method and class method functions in Python. For better understanding of static and class methods, let's look first at basic methods in Python. In this example, I have class A, which has method 1. A method in a class has always one compulsory parameter, named self, which refers the current object. If you know C++ or Java, self is equivalent to this keyword. However, self is not reserved keyword in Python, like this in C++ or Java, but it is just a strong convention in Python to name the first argument self. Now in main, I can call my run method on any instance of class A. So what is difference between static method and a basic method in Python? A static method in Python doesn't require self keyword and you can call the static method with class name. And another difference between a static method and basic method is that you have to use function decorator to define a static method. In a nutshell, static methods in Python are very similar to static methods in C++ or Java but we don't use static methods in Python too often. Now the next question arises, why I need static methods? Let's see an example which shows how we can use static methods in Python and why we need them. A Python class can have only one initializer method, so static method could be used to create an instance of class in different ways. In my example, I have imported the timer tool into my class date to get the current date and time. My class state has also one initializer and two static methods, now and tomorrow. My class state has also one string method, which is used to print the object. Now using initializer, now and tomorrow methods, I can create a new instance of my date class in three different ways. The initializer method takes three parameters, year, month and day. To create an instance using initializer method, I have to pass year, month and day while creating an instance of date class. On other hand, in my static method, I am returning an instance of class date with actual date and time. Because a static method can be called on class name, so I can create a new instance of class date by calling the static method now with class name. Similarly, the static method tomorrow returns the new instance of class date, whereas I have added 24 hours into the actual time. So that was a very simple example of static methods in Python. I hope you have now basic understanding of static methods in Python. A class method is very similar to static method. A class method is defined using class method decorator. If you don't know what function decorators are, please check my other tutorial on function decorators. So what is difference between static methods and class methods in Python? There is hardly any difference between static and class methods in Python, except a class method has one compulsory parameter, which is class itself. Now I have taken the same example from static methods but I have changed the static method now to class method. As you can see, there is hardly any difference between static and class methods in Python, except a class method now has one compulsory parameter, which is class itself. Now if you see the return statements of both static and class methods, you will find another difference. In static method tomorrow, I am returning an instance of date class in which I am calling the date class explicitly. Because static method is nothing more than a function defined inside a class whereas class method is bound to class itself. So again, there is hardly any difference between static and class methods in Python. But in practice, people mostly use class methods than static methods.
The compile function is not used too often in Python, unless you are doing something very special. The compile function compiles a string into code object, which can be later executed or evaluated using exec or eval built-in functions. If you don't know what exec and eval functions are, please watch my other tutorial on built-in functions in Python. The compile function takes multiple arguments. The first argument is source. Source must be a string, which is later compiled into code object. The second argument is file name, which is source file of first argument. And if you are not reading the source from a file, you can leave this argument empty. The mode argument specifies what kind of code must be compiled. It can be exec if source consists of sequence of statements, eval if source consists of single expression, or single if source consists of single interactive statement. We will see an example later. The optional arguments flags and do not inherit control which future statements affect the completion of source. For better understanding of future statements, you should look at the future module in Python. If both arguments, flags and do not inherit are empty, the code is compiled with whatever features are currently in effect. If the flags argument is given but do not inherit is zero, then the future statements specified by the flag argument are used in addition to those that would be used anyway. But if do not inherit is set, then the only those features specified in flags are enabled and the features which are currently enabled are ignored. The fifth argument optimize is also optional and specifies the optimization level of the compiler. It has default value of minus 1. Explicit levels are 0, 1 and 2. Let's see a very simple example of compiled function. In this example, I have a string expression, which is 10 multiplied by 10. Because I am not reading the source from a file, the file name argument is an empty string. You can also write string instead of an empty argument. Because source is a string expression, the mode argument can be either eval or exec. In main, I am passing the code object into eval function. As you can see, I get output 100. Similarly, in next example, I have a string statement, which is a for loop. Because it is a statement and not an expression, mode argument must be exec. Similarly, in main, I am passing the code object into exec function, which prints value between 0 to 9. These were very simple examples of a compiled function. But as I said earlier, the compiled function is not used too often unless you are doing something very special. Complex is one of the easiest functions in Python. Complex function takes up to two arguments and returns a complex number. If you call complex function without any arguments, complex function returns a complex number with zero as imaginary part. Python uses alphabet J to mark the imaginary part of a complex number. If you pass an integer as an argument, as shown in this example, the complex function returns a complex number which consists of real part, which is the argument that you have passed, and the imaginary part, which is zero. Now if you pass two arguments, as shown in this example, the first argument is always the real part and the second argument is always the imaginary part of a complex number. These rules also apply for floating point numbers. Because in Python everything is an object and it has properties and attributes, you can even assess the real and imaginary parts of a complex number as shown in this example. Now if you pass real and imaginary parts as arguments in complex function, the complex function returns a new complex number. It may seem confusing, but if you understand arithmetic with complex numbers, then you know j square is equal to minus 1. Complex function also accepts string as an argument, but the string argument should be a valid complex number. If you pass a string argument which is not a valid complex number, complex function will raise an exception. Now let's move to our last function, compare. Compare function compares two object passes as arguments which could be of any type like string, integer, float, etc. If the first object is greater than the second object, the compare function returns 1. Otherwise, it returns minus 1. If both objects are equal, compare function returns 0. Let's see an example. If I compare two string objects, the compare function actually compares the ASCII values. For example, capital letter A has integer value of 65, whereas small letter A has integer value of 97. With compare function, you can also compare two complex numbers. So compare function wasn't very useful function, which is why it doesn't exist in Python 3. I hope now you have basic understanding of all built-in functions we have covered in this tutorial. 
Thank you for watching and please subscribe my channel for future tutorials.